Pastor Bill Evans, Chetland Fellowship Baptist Church, a part of the Chetland Ministerial, working with Chet TV, Marlin and Company, uh, putting together some messages for people to enjoy. We trust you do. So we're thankful for the opportunity. And um, we've uh, I got a little message this afternoon that I want to portray for you. Uh, it's, it's the Valentine season right around now. And, of course, any time for it doesn't have to be the 14th of uh, February, just the spring season. The days are getting longer and love is in the air and, and all those things. The birds are coming and, and what. Uh, so uh, we just want to consider some thoughts today. Um, if one thinks of a Bible verse about Valentine's, uh, I think pretty hands down is the John 3, 16, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And that's, that vo- verse is simple. It's uh, to the point. It's the full gospel, what you need to know. There's a parish point if we don't really want to understand it and re- receive it, uh, but uh, it's, it stems out of the love of God. And Valentine's is all about love and, and those things. But I, I want us to consider some thoughts today and, and consider some thoughts that go beyond the simple uh, Valentine idea of John 3.16. Uh, Paul writing to the church at Corinth, and it was a troubled little church. People get this idea that uh, the, the churches of Jesus are just churches that are just perfect little people. That is not at all. What, and if you want to read that and find out, you go read the book of 1 Corinthians. You see Paul has to rebuke them pretty good sometimes. But in the second chapter, he starts laying out some of his qualifications and whatever. And that when he came to them, he didn't come with big flowery speech and lots of ability and whatever like that. But he came in the, um, verse 5 says, he says, uh, so that your faith would not be on the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. And he came proclaiming that, uh, I'm not going to know anything about you. i got to tell you about Jesus, that he died for your sins. I I can't know anything but but this. Jesus died for your sins. Christ Jesus, him crucified, is what i got to tell you about. So that was his message there. But then he goes on right from there to uh, verse 6. And he says this about all the things he says we're not doing, but this is what we want to emphasize. He says, yet we do speak wisdom among those who are mature. And that is such an important part. We, the, the gospel is simple, and the, keeping it simple is really important. Keep it simple, stupid. Kiss is what you're supposed to remember in a speech. Keep it simple, stupid. Keep it short, stupid. Um, that, that's, that's the important thing to do. We, we speak among those who are mature. And God wants his people to be mature. I have uh, only one little baby in our church, a year old now. And I, his parents don't want him. He was born last, a year ago. They don't want him to just stay that size. They want him to be, uh, come home and be animated and, and grow. And, and you know, now he's eating hard food and, and those different things. And, and his dad's got him on his shoulders. He's doing bull riding and stuff like this. He holds his little hand up and the whole bit. Um, you want your, your child to grow up. So does God. He wants you to grow up to be more like Jesus, more uh, inclined to uh, be able to stand on your own up against sin and and whatever and and such. And so that's what this idea here is. Um, God's Valentine thought, as I said, is aimed at mature people in verse 6 there. But he goes on in verse 8 and he makes a statement there. And he, um, he, he says this, he says, there's the wisdom of the world. The wisdom of the world, let me show you where it leads you to. The wisdom which is none of the rulers of this age has understood. For if they'd understood it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. So there's a wisdom in the age that leads to destruction. There's a way that seems right unto a man, but the end thereof is death and separation from God. Let's walk this way and over the cliff like a bunch of lemmings. That's the attitude of the world. That's the wisdom of the world where it takes you. And guess who's behind that? The devil. I've said this before. He wants you dead. He comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy and destroy everything you ever built, everything you ever stood for, and whatever he wants to kill and destroy that. And so um, that's the thing. But the wisdom of age brings you to that. But um, the nuggets uh, of gold are found in verse 7. And back there, and it says this, he says, But we speak God's wisdom in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God predestined before the ages for our glory. And as one goes and compares all that story there to keep it simple, it seems to be that the mystery of the gospel, that God was bringing the gospel into the world through the Jewish nation, but they were to prepare it and had it as there and to pass it on, and then it would go out into all the world. And, and it would be shared with the rest of the world. And, and God says, I'm going to unite the Jews and Gentiles, Jews and non-Jews, I'll unite them into one body. And that body is the church of Jesus Christ, which uh, one enters by faith in what Jesus has done. So we, we go from there to the, the blessings that he has. And there's wonderful blessings 
of um, being a child of God and following Jesus. And in this passage that we have before us, where I uh, got my message from, is in verse 9. And he quotes out of Isaiah 64, but Paul says this. He says, just as it is written, things which the eye has not seen nor the ear heard and which have not entered the heart of man, all that God has prepared for those who love him. I want to challenge you that in the Valentine seasons, which is past now for us and whatever, but the, the Valentine experience, we want to give flowers, we want to give chocolates, we want to express love. Well, when we want to be a mature Christian, the Valentine to God is to strive to be mature. And the first thing here is to experience that which God has for us. Things which the eye has not seen. Now, the word seen there is, is an experiential word. It's a little different than other knowledge or ever just plain seeing. It's having seen, and because you've seen it, you know it. There was a bank robbery in town here recently. It's all on YouTube or whatever. But was anybody standing coming in out of the bank when that happened? Yeah, there was one lady standing at the till. She experienced the bank robbery. The rest of us have seen it. And so we don't know it the same way. And so he says, I want to, God says, Paul wrote, quotes Isaiah saying, God wants to share things that eye has not seen. Things which the eye has not seen. You know, there's a very interesting passage of scripture. And I challenged our people with these thoughts when I was talking about it. Because over in the book of 2 Kings, you can read this for homework if you want. There's a wonderful story of things that are not seen. And it says there in verse 15 to 18, uh, the Elijah prophet uh, is being challenged on some things. And so his servant is with him. He says, When the attendant of the man of God had risen early and gone out, behold, an army of horses and chariots was circling the city. And the servant said to him, Alas, my master, what shall we do? So he, Elijah answered and said, Do not fear, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And then Elisha prayed, really important thing to do in bad times. He prayed and he said, oh Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the servant's eyes and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around. And when they, um, when, when they came down to him, Elisha prayed to the Lord and, and, uh, and said, strike this people with blindness, I pray. So he struck them with blindness according to his, Elisha's word. Beloved, we as a people of God, God wants to show us great things. He dares us to ask and to pray. We've got a scenario in Ukraine, Russia right now, people are praying. We've got friends in town who are connected with that story or whatever. We trust and we pray and we pray God. Strike with blindness, make them back off, do whatever. There's another story after we say there that things that have not been seen. Well, we haven't seen that in recent years, but God can just change and back up the whole story as his children ask him to. See, maturity asks you to. Maturity is not just uh, enjoying the fluff of God loves me and I love him, Jesus loves me, this I know. That's beige line. He wants you to go on to maturity and ask and seek great things. The next one is power of trust. And there, as that army fle fled because of his blindness that was put on by, the, by the, the servant of God asking. The next one, chapter 7, verse 1 to 3. Elisha said uh, to a, another situation to the Lord, uh, to the word of, listen to the word of the Lord. To, uh, tomorrow, about this time, a measure of fine flour will be sold for a shekel and two shekels. And he talks about a whole supply of food going to happen. Is, Jerusalem is locked up. The army has besieged the place and they're dying and they're, uh, they're, they're doing awful things. And, and Elisha is saying, uh, uh, the king's asking, what shall we do? And he says, well, tomorrow at this time, this is going to happen. And one of the guys of his army said that uh, before the king. And, uh, and this is what he says, behold, if the Lord, what Elisha said would happen, that these things were going to be so valuable tomorrow, so much abundance tomorrow. He's the royal officer whose hand the king was leaning, answered, said, uh, uh, answered the man of God, behold, if the Lord should make windows in heaven, could this thing be? And Elisha said, it's going to see, you're going to see it tomorrow, but you're not going to get to take part on the morrow, things that eyes have not seen or ears heard. In verse 6 and 7, For the Lord had caused the army of the Arameans who had surrounded Jerusalem they had the sound, they, to hear a sound of a chariot and a sound of horses, the sound of a great army. And guess what they did? So that they said to one another, Behold, the king of Israel has hired against us the kings of the Hittites, the Egyptians, to come upon us. Therefore they arose and they fled in the, in the twilight and left their tents and their horses and their donkeys and all the camp and whatever. And there it was, and they fled for their lives. You read that story, you find the story of a leper, a couple of lepers. We're locked up in the city, we're going to die. They had to stay away from other people. Let's go check out the camp of the enemy. 
worst they can do is kill us, we're going to die anyhow. They went and they found the camp empty and all the goods and all the food there. And the man that said to the king, said it in the presence of the king and to Elisha, that can't happen, no such thing's ever been seen. And he says, tomorrow. And that man was overrun by the people going to get food as they starved. As we trust God, we find that he wants us to be mature, not simple Valentine stuff. Little kid giving a little Valentine at school, whatever. I had a quote I was going to say because um, uh, it's never recorded in history that we know of a husband ever being shot while doing dishes. And I told that to Marvin on the way in. And there's no record. If you find that record somewhere, let me know. A husband being shot while doing dishes. We love and we care about Valentine's, but God wants us in our Valentine concept of him to get beyond, to get to the point of, of uh, um, uh, loving him and, and being mature as he wants us to be. Now the passage we had goes on. He says, I has not seen nor ear heard and neither has entered into the heart of man. That such a stuff would happen, all this food, free food tomorrow, whatever would happen. And all that God has prepared for those who love him. The uh, passage there, uh, prepared, is an interesting word. And we see it in other places. When Simeon uh, was presented with Jesus in the temple after the Christmas story, uh, he says, uh, Lord, your servant can depart in peace because I've seen all that you've done for me and whatever. And then uh, when Jesus is talking about uh, giving out the talents and people will stand before him, he says, enter into your, the presence of your Lord. Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your Lord for the things which have been prepared for you. And God's prepared great things for us if we look to him and ask him for help. And so... As we close off here, it says the things that God has prepared for those who love him. And the passage in Isaiah that Paul quoted says for those who wait for him. And love waits and love trusts and love believes that God said this could happen and therefore I need to uh, play my part. God wants us to grow up. God wants us to uh, be, be strong in him and in the power of his might. It takes reading in his word. It takes studying his word. It takes applying I, I, when I counsel with people, I did this yesterday, stop and think, what about your situation does worrying do about it? If you can't do anything more than right now, situation, what is the next logical step? Take it. But do not worry. Do not fret because of evil. Do not fret because of evildoers. Just what is the next logical step? That's the counsel to have for yourself to go forward and to uh, be mature in, in, in God and Christ. Knowing that he's prepared great things for you. Eyes not seen, ears not heard. Neither has entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Show your love, grow your love, be mature, wait on God, and your heart will be blessed. Thank you. Amen.